Hello and welcome to my video about Mendoza and his fighting style. My name is Christoph and I'm the head instructor of the Bernacle Boxing Club. Well, Mendoza was a really famous and successful boxer at the end of the 18th century. He was three years the champion of England and well known for his new and dynamical boxing style. At the moment I see a lot of discussion out there and there are lots of interpretation existing about Mendoza and his fighting style and it seems to me there's going on a little bit of glorification and mystification because the problem is Mendoza's own book. It is not very detailed. This is a good book and worth to read it but it's not very detailed about footwork, you have nothing in that, about movement, how to move your arms, about parries, blows, how these movements were working, were going on to do that and to understand the boxing style of Mendoza. So you have a lot of big gaps uh, of knowledge about his style. And to fill in these gaps you have some different solutions. Though the first one is to use modern knowledge about modern martial arts, Asian martial arts, experience you have to fill in these gaps and try to bring this Mendoza boxing style back alive. This is good for self-defense for example or you use Mendoza as an inspiration for your own style. This is a really interesting way and I don't want to say this is bad or wrong but it will brings you really far away from the historical Mendoza style. So I prefer the next, the other way, the second way you can do and it's about doing research. A way you always have to do for people who are new to him or to do research and this is not an easy way of time and it's sometimes really frustrating because you try to bring a, a picture back with a lots of small puzzle parts and this yeah it's a little bit frustrating sometimes because they were also left some gaps in the picture but this is what it's about research and this is a way I prefer and we have to accept that we ha will always have some gaps left. So I'm going to talk a little bit about research and what is important to me. Bringing back a lost martial art, there is a simple rule. It depends on the context. So I want to explain this on the example of Mendoza in the 18th century, but this is a general rule you have always to keep in mind because it lacks a lot of yeah, interesting points and bring it into working if you bring this completely Mendoza style out of context. So what does this mean? This means you have to look at the history. This video is not about giving your history lesson, but read about the 18th century history, the history of England at that time. And for example, read the memoirs of Mendoza to get a feeling how the people lived at that time. And they thought at the time, what was the mindset? The mindset always influenced a fighting style because at that time it was all about proudness, what about honor and what easier to go into a fight than today. For example, Mendoza fought a porter who brought his master order of tea and he doubled the price and Mendoza uh, fought for this master against this porter. So you, you never think of that today. And this influences the circumstances, how this fighting style is not only special in Mendoza, also to the other boxes and the style was going on, the development, the style and how it was uh, on how it looked like. So keep this always in mind if you want to bring back a martial art. Then we can go deeper in what is important, which laws were at the time. Uh, are you able or allowed to carry any side weapon and a sword with you and so on. And there we come to a really interesting point which is always forgotten in Hamer and it's about the clothes. 
and especially about the shoes. Well, the clothes are not influencing the, the boxing style very much at that time because we were stripped down the waist and you could box. But the shoes are really influencing every martial art. So if you look at today, we have a lot of modern shoes and high grip shoes and high grip crowds who had not to take care about slip down. But at that days, you were wearing shoes made of leather and you were fighting outside on a ground maybe made of sand or on a wet stage, stage made of wood and slip down easily and this could yeah, influence this could and a fight. If you slip down or running uh, in a fist of an opponent, slipping into a fist of an opponent, so the fight will end and you have to take care what your movements are and not to jump really fast around, just to standing safe and standing stable. So this is a really different, so let's also keep in mind when you want to bring this style back or bring some styles and hang out back. The ground, the shoes is really important. It's a small part, but it, it's a really important part I think people always forget about. So let's get on with our research. Now we have the circumstances of Mendoza's life. By the way, read the memoirs of Mendoza. It's really good to get with your mind back in the 18th century to understand the mindset and the attitude of that time. By the way, all sources I'm using, I linked it in the description page below the video and I also wrote a paper about uh, the sources I used for this video to get the footnotes. It's not cool to use footnotes in a video. So take a look at the paper and you understand what I'm talking about because I want to discuss about these sources with you and this is what the next interesting thing if you want to do research to use sources from that time. So we have some sources of the 18th century, boxing manuals, uh, fighting descriptions and yes, newspapers, for example, some small parts of newspapers. And so you can get an idea of that. It's not easy to use the boxing manuals because, for example, if you take a look at uh, which one I really prefer, boxing made easy. It is said it was written from a pupil by Humphrey and Mendoza and it's very detailed and you have lots of plates in there. The problem is it makes no difference between Mendoza and Humphrey. And I know from Futural, which is another source, that Humphrey had a really different style to Mendoza. Now this is to keep in mind that this book is which the techniques are described not used or was not used maybe from completely from Mendoza or from Humphrey. That is also makes it a little bit complicated. You have to use a lots of sources and I will not have every source out there of the 18th century England boxing. So if you have some one I have not listed below, I will clear about to get this. So I'm really happy about that to get on with my research. As you know, research could be easily outdated tomorrow if I get some new information material. And I will of course give you an, an update if I get something new which changes my opinion uh, of Mendoza in his fighting style. So going back to research, you have uh, some manuals, you have to read through them carefully and bring these puzzles together, but there are also some gaps left. For example, Metazor is describing his lessons and his boxing books are downward strike and there's no downward strike explained in this old manuals of the 18th century. So I use 19th century manuals for that descriptions. It is not maybe not true, maybe it was not used by Menoser, but to use 
uh, sources which are closer in timeline, it is better instead of using completely modern experience and modern knowledge of martial arts. Uh, so I use the 19th century uh, material which is closer to another beginning mid 19th century material so uh, you can fill in the gaps a little bit better make it a little bit smaller uh, by the way I will also note that if I use later manuals to explain this from Mendoza the next key of the understanding of the old time fighting are the roots which were really important. As you know, a set of rules always influences your fighting style because people tend to optimize themselves within the set of rules to win a fight. And at that days, it was the rules called Jack Broughton rules, developed by Jack Broughton. There were seven points, only really basic rules, and it seems to me not every point was used. And the fights from Mendoza, there was also a lot of gentleman agreement, not written down rules. And this, for example, is if you don't use the elbow or do some kicking with a knee or with a foot in a fight, this is not a written down rule. And you nothing read about the using of an elbow, of a knee or foot. Yes, you can use that, but it was about boxing, gentleman boxing at that time. And... This is which also really influences how to fight. And the next thing was the equipment you used for boxing because we know today we have boxing gloves like this one. Yeah, boxing gloves, I think everyone knows that. Uh, some wraps around the hand and fists to protect your hands a little bit the face of your opponent but uh, the first thing is to protect your hands and not to break something and this is really different uh, to the old days boxing fighting they used gloves for exercising Jack Broughton also developed this muffler padded with stew horses or something else to do exercising but in a boxing match you were using no, no protection. You were stripped down the waist and the only protection you had were your muscles. That's it. Simple. And so you have to take care about your wrists, your hands and the other parts of your body because if I break my hand with a punch, this also happens today with, with gloves, I know this, but if you break in a boxing match, burn up your hand, you lose one weapon. Then you have to take care where to hit, where to land a blow on your opponent. I think it was not the really forced movement at the modern days, if you look at modern boxing, it could be really fast and high aggressive dynamic movement and to land blows, uh, just try this out and yes, you break your hand sometimes, but most times you take, you know, you don't care about where you're landing your blow. Yes, you want to land a, a perfect and a good blow, of course, of course you want to do that, but you have to don't, don't care about it if you're landing on, on the head or forehead and in old days you can easily break your hand on the forehead and lose your weapon if you have nothing on that. Well, they were also hardworking laborers, not the office keeper typing like we are today. But yes, it was a lot about strength and muscles and keep it firm also today and to take care about your health. And this is also a myth they were hitting at the face because a lot of people think of, yes, if you hit the forehead, you will break your hand. Yet they were hitting at the face, where there were lots of targets, where to hit in the face. It was the nose, it was the eyes, between the eyes. Uh, some are describing also the mouth. Well, sometimes not a good idea, but yeah, it's described in some sources. All the side, the jaw, the temple here, and under the left ear. The blood vessels here you have and 
the Pact of Stomach, Pact of Stomach Solar Plexus was the KO point at that time. Really important to know. The vase was not so much KO point, this was the Solar the pet Plexus, the Pact of Stomach. And all of the ribs, the kidneys, and the neck, everywhere above the waist you could hit at that time. And this is really really important to know and then we come to this set of rules because it was not allowed to grab a hold below the waist above the waist you could do everything you can't grab your opponent you can't can't do a chancery hold giving a punch in the face you can also do some throwing your opponent and fall on him but when an opponent was with the hands or knees down on the ground, touching the ground, or touched the ground, he was declared as down. And you were not allowed further to hit him. If you did that, you lost the fight by a foul. And this also happened sometimes. And if someone was declared as down, the round was over. Then you had 30 seconds and to come back on a marking in the middle of the ring on a line and the match restarted. So there was no round and time limit. And this fight took really long time. Sometimes half an hour or one hour if you read Mendoza's memoirs, they took really a long time. And this also brings me to yes, an argument against this high rate fast uh, movement, which is host you. Really, if you look at modern boxing, they really well exercise the modern boxers and could do a long time boxing. But if you fight 30 minutes, one hour, and yes, you need a lot of wind caught at that time. And I did a little bit of calculation on some sources. It is in Swift, I think, of the 19th century. We see a list of boxing matches, time and rounds. And it was 30 minutes and over 20 rounds. So the rounds were about 1 minute and over 15 seconds, up to 2 minutes. Sometimes it depends when they were coming together, do them uh, wrestling and slip down. And then it restarted. So also an interesting fact to keep in mind. If you slip out without getting a blow, you could lost a fight. Happened to Humphrey when they fought against Mendoza. So this is the important part about the roots. Always keep this in mind when you bring back this style, how you're acting and what you're doing on this. And now let's take a look at how was the fight looking like. We know it was not really so high speed like today. And if you take a look at these old pictures. In this picture you can see the fight between Humphrey and Mendoza. And what you also can see that they're standing really close together, two and two. This is something you will find also on a lot of other pictures at that time. You can also see the seconds, bottle holders and time camper standing really close to the fight as well. This is maybe not the holy truth. They stand a little bit apart from the fighter. But if you take a look at other fighting descriptions from Humphrey Mendoza, the seconds, uh, I think it was Johnson stepped in and blocked a punch from Mendoza. So they were standing really close and it seems to me that the fighters fought in one line. Like you know from modern fencing fighting on one line, not of the same speed, but they fight more in a line. And this is also really different to modern boxing. In modern boxing they uh, do a lot of turning around, do a lot of moving around, circling each other and this influenced all the fighting style a lot if you look at the old days when you fight more in a line forward and retreat this is a really interesting point keep that in mind now you have everything you know about the research and we can go into mendoza's fighting style so let's do a 
conclusion. It took a lot of time now, but it's really important for me to understand what I'm doing and why I'm this doing. So the first conclusion is about 18th century mindset. The second one was about uh, Mendoza, his life and law at the country which he lived. And the third one was also about the clothes, this clothes. The fourth one was about the rules and equipment they used. And don't forget about, about Mendoza was uh, of Jewish religion. This also influenced some uh, sources which are talking sometimes are really bad about him. Now, this is about doing a research. Uh, though we can go ahead and take a closer look into the books and the sources and maybe how it worked, what Mendoza was doing. Here is the original plate out from Mendoza's book. Look at the feet, his hands and the attitude of the upper body, which I will explain later. So what was important? The food, just the front from the left one is shown directly to this opening. The right one was definitely by the side and it was turned to the front. It was not a fancy position like so. Both one in a line, if you look at the picture and the description. So a little bit aside, choose a little bit to the front. If you're looking on the side, it was looking like that. A little bit standing a little bit more square. And now leaning your body forward. This is really important. Leaning your body fully forward. This is the same position which Broughton had. really interesting and the reason why Mendoza explained that the reason was to bring out the pit of stomach the solar plexus out of the reach of the opponent just leaning forward you breeze your head in front this was the main uh, knockout point at that day so this is why they had protect it take care about that so if you're leaning this forward it's protected more about with your muscles in front and the next thing was sunk down your neck. I found in another source and the problem is I'm not sure about sunk down your neck. It could be a little bit chin down but I'm not sure about that chin down because if you're doing this leaning forward your head is naturally coming down. So I think it was not special uh, sink down your neck or bring your chin down. It was just inclining forward just Sink your shoulders down, uh, standing like this, and here, looking straight at your opponent. If you read from Humphrey or 19th century, most boxes uh, looked straight to the opponent. Yes, they did the chin a little bit down, but not too much. It was just a little bit down. Not like modern boxing, bring it really down the chin. This is the information which I always say, yes, you can do that, that's not wrong, but it's only one source is talking about uh, sunk down your neck. So, shoulders down, and the next thing was about Mendoza making a fist, thumb over your fingers like this, bringing this forward. Now I change my position in front, and bringing my fists in front. So you can see my knuckles here, fists together, and the elbows a little bit turned outward. This is also in another source, I think it's complete, complete handbook of boxing. But you will see this in my article there a little bit turned outward. So this was and, and, and the fists in the high of the mouth, throat, or chin in this area. Now from the side, it's not fully stretched, the fists, not this, not, not this one, and not back to the face. It was just this uh, on the half stretched out and closed together. Hold the fist. Future is saying about my daughter is holding his hands a little bit, the, the left one uh, in front. I think it doesn't matter if I have this, but this was the Mendoza attitude. This was the Mendoza attitude. So you see, you have a really defense position. So you have only a target this part of the head and this part of the body is, is backwards with 
if you're leaning forward and the next thing was the weight on the left foot forward just to show the weight have in front like that so you're leaning really forward weight on the front feet important information also leaning forward so Mendoza was described as having a really defense orientated style you see close close just only using my hands simple smart motions and the next thing was from a desert to avoid a blow it's not only by pairing a blow it was better to to just throwing head and body back just by maybe doing some parry but throwing head and body back because i'm leaning so much forward that when i just aiming at my face and I'm leaning my head and body back maybe doing a step back so this was this was the possibility Mendoza is describing in his book and now we come into the myth Mendoza was using this attitude because he was such a small one so that's not true he was one meter and 70 centimeters high and the average size in England at that time was 1 meter and 70 or 1 meter 69. Take a look at the statistics on the link description. And he was on my average size. Yes, he was a middleweight, he was about, I think it was 73 kilograms heavy, that is a little bit of middleweight. Yes, he fought against heavier opponents and taller opponents. He lost also again then, like Johnson. But if you take a look and read through Pugilistica, and all other sources, you will not find any word about he was such of small size and his style was especially for him. It was a special style from him, but it was not on because he was a small one. There's no word about that. And the next fact why I don't really believe his style was special because a small one, he had a boxing school and he teached his his style at the pupils there and I cannot believe he was only teaching at dwarfs on his own size so this is also an argument against this he was a small one so this was like futural is saying in other sources you can read it was an attitude based on defense because they had my hands in front leaning forward and I can leaning backward so, this was the important thing of Mendoza, why he used the style working out from the defense at his days. So this is the main reason, in my opinion, why Mendoza was using that style. And the next interesting thing on his style is uh, a lot of other sources are talking about he was weak in blows. So we have to understand what was the new, this is also the question, what was so new on Mendoza's style out there, that he was successful. He also lost some fights, uh, but he was really successful with his style. So what was new in comparison with other styles in there, we have to take a look at Humphrey. I explained before Humphrey used a really different style. As he's leaning backwards, left hand up and right hand here to play the pistol stomach. And if you just said he always parried with the left arm, most of the time with the left arm was hitting with the right. And it's also so saying um, he was a really hard hitter because the right one was back and traveling away and falling with my way into the blow. This is a common practice done in the 19th century to bring back your fist and falling into the blow. You, it was not good because you saw the blow coming, running into. It was better to do half arm boxing like this one and falling into the blow. But it was at that time a hard hitter, Humphrey known as hard hitter, pairing with the left, like Broughton was also described boxing, pairing with the left, using the left arm as a shield and hitting on him with the right. And Mendoza overran him with both hands. So this is the really really interesting thing on Mendoza he used both hands for attacking both hands for attacking bam, 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 bam. it is written about Humphrey was overrun by Mendoza both hands attacking like that but this was 
weak or he was weak in blows, other sources of the anger about that, weak in blows, because he could only use his arm and his shoulder, and he used both arm, both arm to parry, and he did all the, the famous Mendoza chopper. It was not definitely by him, but he did this famous Mendoza chopper, like that, if you're parrying a blow downwards, for example, and bringing a chopper back, fist blow back into the face, that he was also famous for that, and he was famous, but also for shifting, changing my position to retake my opponent. These were the important things on Mendoza's style. And I have also an argument I forgot about his size. If you read Pugilistica, an interesting book about uh, these all fighters, there's just only one fighter, I think it was Hunt named, where it's really described that this was a small one and every time was overmatched about um, his opponents. And he did use some special tactics. He was, for example, uh, stepping aside. Men also, in his book, you can read of side spring. If someone is doing a lot of advantage on you, they'll use spring it aside, let him run on your side and punching him from this. This was uh, the one thing you have in footwork in Mendoza, spring in one side, this was also doing hunt, stepping aside, but it was so small to come into uh, opponents, uh, under the reach of opponents and use his own uh, hands, he was doing, uh, he, he's stooping forward, which means uh, ducking forward, running and doing hard body blows. This is the only one who is uh, 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 get a connection with ducking. And uh, in Wikipedia, I can read English Wikipedia, Mendoza was doing some ducking, and I'm forced to say they actually have no source. But I think that's not true. He was doing ducking. This was a common style developed in the 19th century. And this is also a, a part we have to discuss about it because, in my opinion, I and mean, also was also not using this form of ducking. It was special, written to hand and not to Mendoza. So this is a really uh, important information on that. So this was there in important about Mendoza and his attitude. And bring this comparison to Humphrey, who had maybe used the old school. So and these are important notes about. There's uh, another footwork in his book when someone is attacking you and running also on you can only do a turn on your left leg, left heel and he's falling over your left leg. This is also possible to what Mendoza is describing. Though, and the next thing is which you can do Mendoza style as some are explaining this is good for wrestling because standing there you can honor your opponent and go into wrestling. So this is a really nice idea for coming under up and go into wrestling into the opponent, lift him up, go grappling, throw him. This is a really interesting idea and I'm sure this is working. No discussion about that. But the problem if you read the fights about Mendoza, uh, he was not going uh, more into wrestling than any other boxer. Just it was about boxing. As wrestling happened, when you when clinched, when you grab, uh, you could do a cross buttock. Broughton was really famous for that, to do a lot of damage to his opponents using the cross buttock. But where it is also written in the sources, wrestling is about strength and weight. And if Mendoza was a middleweight and, uh, middle and sometimes overmatched by the weight of his opponents, yes, you can throw. I know this half your opponent also did that in, in some fights. Uh, it's no problem. So uh, you don't read about that Mendoza was a good wrestler and was always trying to come into his opponent and doing a throw. He was also thrown by the other opponent. So if you read his fights. So this also, uh, well, it's a good idea using that style, but this was not the main intention of Mendoza to go uh, batter or come batter into wrestling and batter to the opponent. There's nothing re uh, uh, written about that. So, make a conclusion about, about his style, what we actually know. So, this style uh, Mendoza was using was a defense oriented style, leaning to the front, just pairing with the hands in the front. What you gotta bring in out the pit of stomach, out of the reach of the opponent, just here. 
using both hands for attacking. Also a good idea at that time. And trying to avoid a blow by throwing hand and body back. Springing to your side or turn on your left heel. And the opponent which is running on you, or this one, you can see better. The opponent is running on you, he's falling over that. If you're coming together, doing some grappling. Now this is what I know actually based on the research. And the size, body size is, in my opinion, really a myth. If you take a connection to the 19th century, Professor McDonnell one was only three centimeters higher and was also middleweight and also boxed against Sullivan on a lot of heavier opponents. And he was using a really open guard like that to protect the whole plexus like here. Just a really 19th century style, really open. It had a 19th century, it was stacking. So if someone was attacking to the head, he could do like that. This was not known in Mendoza's time. So you have to stand really on a defense and working, blocking, pairing, whatever it was looking like. Uh, this I will show you in the second part of the video. So thank you for watching. Take a look at the article, take a look at the sources. Feel free to get your or create your own opinion about that and happy to discuss about that. And yes, you're welcome every time. Goodbye.